it's the 10th of August, I've come down the plot, I was going to possibly be harvesting these onions, but a lot of them hadn't toppled, so I thought, right, enough's enough, I'll force topple them. Um, because it's it's going to rain today, so I want to try and lift these out on a dry day, to be honest, so I thought, well, um, I'd probably say 40% of them are toppled, so I thought, right, well, I'll just lay them all over, which is simply just go down, you can do it all nice and neatly, you know, this is all pointing a certain way, or you can just say, as long as you bend them over, you know, around the neck, don't force them down, um, and all that'll do is signal to the uh, to the onion that that's enough. It, you might try and stand at the tips again, you know, to the sun. Depends how long they're in, they're in for. But ideally, you know, anything up to a week, leave them in the ground and then lift them and then start um, the drying process. So uh, I thought I'll leave them in because um, it gives me time to uh, prepare what's going to go in here next, which will probably be more broccoli. Um, I just need to work out if I've got any netting left over to put over this bed and then that'll uh, be a late late season crop if it comes to anything um, we'll have a quick look round us I'm, I'm just here to do a little bit of harvesting today so I've got some beans and blueberries to harvest and a, a couple of cabbage probably um, I just generally have a look round how you know how things are going because um, the last video was obviously the, the potato and the garlic which garlic's all drying out um, so I need to move that really to free up the drying rack for these because the ones in the back garden as well they've started toppling so I've been pulling them out and just laying them in the drying rack but it's getting a bit tight on space in that drying rack because obviously there's 80 garlic and I don't know how many onions there'll be quite a few because um, originally I think I sold about 120 you know and obviously I had a lot of problems at the start of the year with weed killer was causing them a uh, real lot of problems so these are the ones that kind of were on the, the brink of death that I brought back you know with a bit of pampering and they've actually you know produced an onion which you know i was kind of surprised about and then we had a problem with obviously uh, a damping off issue where i lost a few but uh, it definitely worked out better that as i saw any that were damping off just pull them out otherwise it's like a fungal spore you know it spreads um but they look okay the necks are fairly thick which is usually a nitrogen problem but i haven't put any feed in here you know so um whether there's too much nitrogen in the bed, I don't know. Um, but some, you know, you can't always get them thin neck. They, they will dry and they will store, you know, because, I mean, the Santero, I mean, the ones that are at the very far end of Bristol. I've not grown them before, so there's things, two rows of them. The rest are Santero. And the Santero, usually, you know, I'll pull them, you know, end of July, August, and I'm still, they're still perfectly fine to use up until late March, the year after. You know, they store really well, you know, where a lot of other ones, they kind of, they come to the end, you know, around sort of December, January um, of storage life, you know, especially if you, you know, do some sets, some, you know, I used to grow sets, I used to do the, um, I think it was Stuttgart and the um, Sturon, I've done them, and the Red Baron I did, you know, but um, in the last few years I've pretty much gone seed only, because um, the Red Spark are good storers and the Santero are good storers, so I'll say the Bristol are just ones I'm trying out just to see how well they store. You know, um, I don't tend to do overwintering like the Japanese onions. You know, all they tend to do is you'll harvest them a month, you know, to six weeks earlier. So, um, but I, I think I've had to probably buy about six onions. So, um, I've just been, the ones in the back garden, I've been pulling them in and just using them. Instead of buying some more, I thought I'll just use them fresh. Because you can do, you don't have to do all this process. If you need some onions, pull some out of the ground, you know, and just use them. It's only if you want to store them, you do this whole, you know, this, this net, you know, folding them over and then drying them out. So uh, I'll get the camera, and we'll have a look around how everything else is getting on. And uh, because everything's not brilliant, but you know, there's, there's a bit of work that needs done up here because we have the rain now, obviously, the, all the grass on the paths is growing back. So I need to sort of get cleared up, uh, otherwise, it can quite easily get out of hand. So um, I'll have to deal with that at a later date, you know, because I've got a few things on and it's just not worth it. When the weather's horrendous, it's just not worth traipsing down in, in the wet doing it all. You know, if, you, if your crops are OK, just leave them be and wait for a dry window. Should one appear, which it should do. You know, we're still in, well in August, you know, the floods won't appear here until sort of end of October. That's when it's kind of game over on here for me. You know, it's, um, it's just too wet. But you don't know how wet the weather's going to be this winter so it's been a funny year weather wise you don't you just don't know it's not as predictable as it used to be but um we'll just have to see what uh, what happens and we'll have to deal with it as it comes all right we'll have a look around and then uh, we'll get on some harvesting we'll start off up in the fruit cage to have a look around how things are in here you know i've got more blueberries to pick 
Uh, like I've said you know, in previous videos, they've not done as well this year, I didn't expect them to do, but they put more foliage growth on um, down in the, you know, for actually from the, the root ball, which is kind of what I wanted, you know, and I can take some of these taller branches, because I want to try and shrink them down a bit and keep them a fairly compact bush. Um, need a bit of weed in here, and obviously, you know, if I'm going to mulch again, I'll mulch up. I can just see at the back there some courgettes. I don't know if you remember, I had a leftover courgette plant that I chucked at the back. Well, that tends to be chucking out the bigger ones, to be honest. So growing them in pots, you do tend to get uh, a little bit of control over them, you know, so you don't end up with whopping great big maras. Um, unless if you want that sort of thing, that's fine. Um, got these cabbages, you know, they're kind of erupting, you know, because they've just been in too long, they're a deluge of water and they're trying to go to sea. But there's one there, you know, a larva sat. These are just leftovers. Purple sprout and broccoli. Uh, it's still going, but I've had a mole in here and it's been tunnelling underneath them. So there's a couple that are toppled. So I, last time I was there, I just treaded them back in a bit. So they, they could do with staking, really, because otherwise they'll grow really bent. And I don't, you know, it gets a bit windy, they might topple. Um, so I'm hoping I don't really have to stake them, but I might have to. So there's not a lot of room in here, but I've kind of maximised the growing space in this fruit cage. And it's not worked out too bad, to be honest. Um, you know, I've got a lot of beans here, which don't know if you can see still loads of white fly but um i'll harvest some of these beans today but white fly has been a real issue this year on, on beans if, like my cobra beans are really suffering but they've still got beans on so and i've had loads of beans so i don't mind if they suddenly stop cropping to be honest uh because i'm i'm getting a bit short on freezer space you know so i've got like broccoli and things like that to to go in uh, but I do have a spare chest freezer that I can pull out should I need it, which isn't a bad thing, you know. Um, just trying to get down the back here. This, this is it, um, baby sweet corn. There's no um, there's no cobs coming yet, so you don't have to let that pollinate. So I have to try and look at these courgettes down here. Yeah, great big things. Yeah, so that'll come out today. Otherwise, um, it'll end up a monster next week. Um, so the, the purple sprout and broccoli, you know, it's like here, it's where, you know, it's toppled a bit, it sells this one, and it's just a mole was tunnelling under there. Um, I wouldn't mind if it was an end, I hate having a gap in the middle, and then that one will lean against that one, and that will lean, and it just causes a problem, so I'll try and get them sort of propped up and growing straight, because if you lean them over, the tip will come right, it'll bend around again. Um, you don't have to, you know, they're perfectly fine to, to leave, you know, and just hill them up around the, the stem a bit more. And it's just to see how, it, how, how they, they grow in here through the winter, you know, because it, it isn't a raised bed as such, and this ground gets really wet. Because I was just surprised about the blueberries, the years I've had them, that they did not die, because no one else on there seems to keep, be able to keep theirs alive. But I've got a lot of little beans I can harvest from the, uh, I think the safari. Um, so I can just keep coming, I get like big molehills in here, you know, so just all, all I can do really is tread them down. And hopefully they'll eventually bugger off. But moles, voles, whatever, they're all a bit of a nuisance, but you know, they have a right to be here, I guess. Just wish to go on the field somewhere. So let's close that fruit cage because you have to remember there's brassicas in there. And if you get one cabbage white in there, say goodbye to your brassicas. Uh, raspberries, say a bit, but a bit of a mess. There is some appearing on them, but I'm not, not gonna pick them this year. I'll just let them wasps have them and whatnot. And, um, I'll dig them up and probably put them somewhere else. So, because I've got to get the new beds done here. So, if the beans die early, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It just means I can get on with these beds a bit sooner. But, uh, we were in a bad way last week, but, you know, the stacks of beans on it again. I can't grumble. You know, the, the, I've had two, two and a half to three bucketfuls off this. So, um, and there's some cobra beans at home that are chucking them out and because we've had this rain as well that'll do them a world of good because they do like a good drink and we've got uh, my mum's sweet peas these are just sort of like late ones but you know the flowering these leftover sunflowers were near enough as high as my shed the titan um the other ones over there that big thing up there is probably about nearly nine foot now that so i just do it for a bit of fun you know i know there's this challenge going on but uh I just do it for a bit of fun. If I need to bed for something else, I'd, I'd just grow something else. But it's just a bit of fun, you know. And uh, I'll take some seed. And if I've got space next year, I'll grow some more. But the white fly, I've been hammering them as well. But um, 
I've sprayed with stuff, you know, I've tried insect sprays, soap sprays, but the white fly, they're just too much of them. I mean, last time I was there, I managed to get an hose pipe across and sort of jet them, you know, and there's, there's a lot of white fly bodies all over the place, but they just come and there's just too many numbers and not enough predators to deal with them. Well, we're out rest at plot. Uh, the South Pole mirror, they're still in. I cut the tops off the Orla um, when I was down last because I didn't want to risk losing them to, to blight completely, so they were quite blighted. So I thought I'll take the tops off. They're still in the ground, so I'm just hoping the slugs are leaving them alone. Uh, I'll just rake this before because it's going to start with weeds and grass. So if I can rake it a bit and keep it disturbed, it'll just slow it down a bit. It will be covered eventually. Or if I find something to plant in it, you know, like turnips or something like that, or chard or something. Peas, um, they're just getting sort of pecked to buggery. And we've got a random tomato plant growing here, which get rid of that. Um, but yeah, it's just all the leaves are getting nipped. I don't know whether it's like a beetle or something like that, or, you know, I don't think it's pigeons. Um, but we'll just see what they come to. You know, I'd say they went in a bit late. Um, I had some in a module tray, I've put them at home in the garden, which you'll see in a later update. They seem to be a bit healthier, but it is late for peas now, you know, with mildew and stuff like that. Little wasp buzzing around me, there's a few wasps about today, and I think they're that way out for stinging. Um, these are the cauliflower, looking a bit poorly sick, but uh, they're just hungry, and because they were pot bound, they need to get some roots tapped in, which I think they are, because there's the middles are greening up now, um, so hopefully they'll come to something. We've got a long time to grow yet. Um, as long as they don't start forming heads anytime soon, we'll see how we go on with them. Um, and there's the what was the garlic bed. It's all with the cabbages now. We've got January King, Tundra, and at the end there, uh, I think I'm trying to see the tag from here is a bit difficult. But I think it's. Uh, Sienna, I think it's called that one. And then uh, these are the other ones that was originally the broccoli bed. We've got the you know, killers all they were called. Some more Clapton, so they've come on trumps. You know they've they've come up and they're doing a little twisting in the middle, so it shouldn't be long. And we've got the broccoli. It it is pickable, but I'm going to risk it and leave it a few more days. I've got one that's a bit of a a rump thing, I'll just leave that, it's, it's just a rump plant, I mean that one, well, I think for a few more days I'll see how it goes, I'll take the heads off and then get the side shoots in. All the asparagus is sort of like doing its thing now, it's all growing to ferns and then we've got the um, tender star beans which are starting to flower now so the beans coming on them soon, so that's more beans. So I'm definitely not going to do as many beans next year. In years gone by, you know, um, I used to struggle sometimes for beans. It'd, it'd just be a bad year. So you thought, I'll do plenty, and now I've got too many. Um, let's have a look over the sand. We've got some more of the Primal 2, um, which are in. So I pulled the last two heads out last time I was here. And um, I had some leftovers, so I thought I'll shove them in just to get small cabbage. The Rigoletto, they look all right to be honest, so I might take one of them today. I say I'm not going to video harvesting, we'll have a look at it when I've harvested everything just to see what I get done. I don't want to do too much today because I've got a bit of a bad back, so I'm not going to go mad. And if it starts raining, I'll just stop, you know, and get home. Sweet corn, I don't think the sweet corn is going to be too good this year because I just think the, the, um, they dropped the pollen before the cobs were ready to receive the pollen, if you know what I mean. So I think there'll be a quite, quite a good chance that there's a lot of um, duds, you know, cobs that just aren't pollinated. Um, but it's one of them things, you know, um, I think might end up doing sweet corn at home. It's just working out what to do at home, what to do here. You know, I can control the water inside of it, because sweet corn does like a bit of water. Um, it's not sent up as many sort of like sucker side shoots like there is on the bottom of that one there this year. Usually they send them up quite early. But um, we'll see how they go. The tassels have got to brown off a bit more yet. Obviously you'll end up probably earwigs coming in and aphids and that. But uh, I'm hoping these are fairly slug free because they do look like a nice head. Nice tough like Savoy sort of texture, wrinkly leaves. A bit of leaf damage but I think that's just slugs that have been in there and I, I did put pellets in ages ago which kind of cleared the cauliflower up 
So that's it for a look round. So there's all the onions all nicely sort of laid out. And all, like I say, all you, all you do is you just get the top and just fold it over. You see, you don't have to push hard there. Just, just fold it over and over, over the next week it'll just sort itself out. You know, they will try and stand up again possibly, but um, they tend to naturally fall that kind of direction because of the winds here, but uh, I thought I'll lean them in that, they're not going to get blown back up. But uh, we'll just see and then you know, in the next week I'll lift them up and get them home and then uh, they can have a few days to dry and I'll take them back to a nice single skin and then I'll uh, sort of dry them properly then. I always like taking them back to a single skin because you get a chance to inspect them better. It is a bit of a palaver, you know, a bit of a faff, but it's nice to see when they're all strung and you've got nice, nice skins on them, no holes or anything like that. I usually, you know, with the garlic, I, t I usually take two, two layers off it to try and get the uh, garlic back to one skin which we'll have a look at in a garden update, which I'll probably do. I'll probably end up showing you when I'm doing these onions as well at the same time. So uh, I'll get on with some harvesting and we'll have a quick look at that when it's done. All right, I'm done for today. Uh, back's aching a bit too much, so I thought, well, no point killing myself. So I had a bit of a clear up on some of the paths. Just pretty much just give it a bit of a scrape off the top with a hoe, um, just to tie me over, because I will be putting weed killer down on the paths it just comes back that quick so I thought I'll clear it and then a bit of it can grow back and then I can sort of put some weed killer on it um, otherwise it just ends up like that and it's just a bit of a path that slugs can get from you know from all that foliage there onto my beds I've sort of trampled down all down the side here because for some reason the landowner decides to do all down there but behind mine doesn't so they've got to, got to keep an eye on it because it's just full of weeds so I might actually put some spray on that because I don't see why I should keep having to maintain that it's not mine because it just spreads weeds onto my plot then okay cabbage white there desperate to get in and lay its eggs it can sod off um, right so we'll have a look at what I've harvested um, the beans I can see straight away I've missed a few of the beans but I'll probably might get another pick off them, another two picks, and I'll probably finish them because I will have a lot of beans because they, obviously the tender star will start coming soon. And obviously the dwarf French beans. I've picked some. I don't want to pick them big because I like I like them small. Smaller the better for me them. Purple sprout and broccoli. I've kind of um, there's one I don't know, you can see for right back there, sort of halfway down, it's curled right over. It should straighten up. I've sort of treaded them back in and and held them up a bit um, just to stop them rocking. Once they're pointing the right way, it's easy to stake them then. Um, right, so I've got uh, some blueberries, look at the beans, that's one of the, the well the last Primo 2 cabbages, um, this is one of the Rigoletto, nice decent size head on it, it's not rock hard but it'll do for now, and then we've got um, one of the dwarf French beans, so they're small, but I, I do like them like that, I did, I'd pick the cobra, that sort of size as well really. You don't have to start topping and tailing them so much. It's a bit of a pain when you start chopping them to freeze and it takes a while. So uh, that'll do for today. Had a bit of an harvest, a bit of a tidy up. So I won't be coming down for a few days. The van's got to go and have some work on it. It's that MOT time of year. So uh, I'm hoping what we on today, Tuesday. I can get down probably maybe Sunday and get them pulled out. And I can go in these other raised beds and probably maybe harvest sap broccoli uh, if it's ready and then pull some of the dead foliage off around the bottom ends and just a bit of a tidy up, pop a few pellets in and then sort of leave them be to finish off early and I can get ready for me a jolly holiday do a bit of fishing. I've done a bit of fishing already actually, I went the other day out river, um, caught a few so it's just nice to get out again. So uh, on that note, I thought it's just been an update and a bit of a harvest thing. Um, there will be some more videos. I don't know what yet, obviously, probably. It just depends on the weather as I'm doing things. If it's chucking it down, if I'm pushed to do it, I'll probably just get on with it, you know, and then um, I'll give you an update from there. So uh, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.